Hello, welcome, and thank you for coming. My name's Lude Lloyd, and, uh, guys, I messed up. I became a mayor, and I don't think it went over too well. <laughs> there were a lot of people mad at me, and that's just kind of how it goes sometimes. But I am going to try to teach you my mistakes so that you don't make them when you eventually become mayor. Just as a heads up, I am not one of those content creators that is here to give you a guide before the Alpha 2 starts. I am just going to kind of tell you the general things that happen with the mayoral system, like just things that might be good to know and maybe why the mayor system might not be what you think it is. So we all are aware of the mythical position known as mayor, where very few amount of people in the world will be able to become a mayor. And with the 85 nodes, there should be at least 85 mayors in a concurrent player base of about 10,000 to 50,000. Yeah, it's not going to be... I can't imagine this being a very good video, considering it's only going to be geared towards a few amount. but. I think this information is important, and I think it would be good to know if you are a citizen of a node so that you can tell if your mayor is good or bad. However, before we can get to that, I think we should lay down the foundation of what a mayor is and how to become mayor. It is relatively simple. You are going to need a level 10 prerequisite simply because Intrepid has um, made sure that Level 1s can't just run from Lionhold straight to a node, level up the node, and then try to vote for their best mayor, and then keep creating alts as they want their mayor in the node. So yes, you will have to be level 10 in order to become a citizen of the node, and those that are level 10, you will have to wait until the vote commences, and once the vote commences, you will be able to vote for the mayor that you would like. You may even nominate yourself. If you would like to become mayor, yeah, nominate yourself and uh, start chatting away, start yapping away in that global chat because you're going to need some votes in order to win. Once the hardest part is over and you've actually won the election, then the easy part comes. The mayoral system is actually quite easy and very simple to maneuver, and you might be wondering, if that's true, then how did you fuck oh. up? Well... I'll, I'll get there, I, I promise. The mayor gets to see many different things inside of its UI. You get to see the taxes, you get to see buy orders, you get to see the buildings that you can buy. You also get to see your treasury where you have the amount of gold that you need. You get to see any sort of system announcements, citizens that pay their dues and stuff like that. And you can even pay your own dues as a mayor. The hard part really comes in when you start needing to adjust these settings and start prepping for what you want to do as a mayor. So for the tax rates, you can have a treasury global tax rate that you can adjust for like the artisan tax rate. You have the goods tax rates, which are marketplace and storage upgrades taxes. And then you have the trade taxes, which are the caravansary and hunting lodge taxes. So you can all range these from 10% to 100%, and everything is fine and dandy. Uh, once you have set your tax rate as you wanted for each of these individual things, then you can just move on to the next part. And it's literally just that. You just touch and go. And that will basically set up how much income your node is going to get and you have your node income in the upper right hand corner of your UI. It is pretty simple and you will start with quite a sizable amount in Alpha 2. I believe when I was elected mayor of Miralith that I was uh, granted about 150 gold to start with. This could come from things like selling uh, raw materials from the encampment and crossroads stage to the vendors that pop up around your node area uh it could just be a starting thing that they have set up for alpha 2 i'm not entirely sure at this point however once 
you have checked your treasury and know what's in your bank account, you'll want to look at buy orders. And when you start looking through the buy orders, this is where it starts to get pretty complex, where you are looking for certain resources and there's certain commodities that you can make out of them that are tier one, tier two, tier three. They have like different node resources, luxury resources, war material resources. Um, and so there is quite a lot to look at, but it's quite simple, really. You basically just go into the menu and select which resource you would like to have and have your citizens go out there and go get it for you. It gets a little more complex, and I promise you this is where I messed up. Before you create that buy order, I would highly, highly suggest that you go check out your buildings and the plots that you have available to you. I believe at the start you start with four plots, and those plots you can basically turn into a passive building or a artisanship building for the most part. Any of these buildings that you, you uh, do intend to build will cost gold and they will have a maintenance fee attached to them. So you will have to make sure that you are gathering the right materials, ordering the right buy orders, and just in general making sure that your node is going in the right direction. And so this is where the macro game of being a mayor is going to be really interesting for some players, where you will have to actually socialize with other mayors and make sure that you are indeed going in the right direction with what you want to do or maybe you are strictly competing with the neighbor next to you and now you have to either think about going to war with them or possibly expanding in a different direction for your vassal nodes i don't think any of this will be in for alpha 2 but this is stuff to look forward to in the future i think it's very very important for us as players to make sure that the designated design is continuing to go in the right path so as long as you are keeping these things in mind our feedback should be on point but back to my point this is where the buy orders and the buildings are coming together in the system the buy orders are going to be those things that you go send out your citizens for so that you get the commodities and the node resources that you need in order to do that, you'll need to change some settings with your buy orders. I did not do this. You can change the purchase price. I did not do this. My citizens were getting one node currency when they could have been getting 10. You can change the duration of the buy order. I did not do this simply because three days was enough for the test. You can change the quantity of how much you'll need to complete it. I put too much, and I will explain the reason why. And the last one is you can change the contribution limit per citizen. At first, I made this way too low. So yeah, all these things are very, very important for making sure that your citizens want to go out and do that. However, increasing any of these things will also increase the gold that you will need to spend it. It will increase the total revenue of what your node needs to spend. And yeah, there could be some balancing, but generally for the alpha, I would just max at least the, the node currency. Uh, players will not go out and do buy orders if they're not getting paid. And apparently one node currency for a gemstone can make a guild want to kill you. Uh, let's put it that way. Now the reason why you want to go look at your buildings now is because you want to make sure that you are doing the math for those node resources. It gets a little complex here, but stick with me. The materials that you get for the buy orders can be locked out based on a previous buy order that is happening. Therefore, if you have a citizen going out and getting ruby crystals you cannot use ruby crystal as a material for a different buy order you are locked out so you will need to make sure that you are planning ahead of time making sure that two different buy orders won't intersect with each other and they won't interrupt the process of production in in the city 
So you have to be very, very careful and very, very aware. And yeah, that means mayors are going to have to do some reading. They're going to have to do some studying. I could give you a guide, but I'm not going to because I think that takes the fun out of it. One of the second to last things is going to be doing the commissions. It's really, really simple. You just select the commissions that you would like and you move on with your life. It's pretty click and play. The only issue is they are on a 24 hour timer, so you'll have to log in daily as a mayor. And the other issue is that they cost a lot of money sometimes. So when you are scheduling commissions, make sure that your node currency is good. Make sure that your bankroll is fine. Other than that, you're pretty much just straight chilling. You're going to be setting things and moving on. Most of the work is going to be doing the prep work as a mayor. And to that, good luck. Uh, there is going to be a lot of math with how you are going to be doing the commodities and materials for your node resources. But beyond that, just go ahead and set things off and play because that's all there is to it, really. Now for pretty much the last part of what you need to do in order to create a buy order is make sure that the quantity is relatively low. So the contribution size can be at max. That means a player can contribute more to the node. That's fine. But make sure that the quantity that is needed is relatively small. You may need to have ruby crystals for a different buy order, and you may not need that many. I made the mistake of actually trying to double up on these buy orders and also adding too many buy orders, which led to my citizens not being focused. So if you are just going to create all the buy orders and make sure that you get all the materials that you need and you don't care about your node currency or anything like that, sometimes that can be a bad thing. You may have done the math perfectly so that you can get the buildings that you need once all the buy orders are completed. However, I noticed that it sends your citizens everywhere. And I thought initially that might be fine because my citizens are going to want to do just whatever they want and they'll come back with the resources. What I found was a very, very low production rate. So make sure that your citizens are on singular tasks or very small amount of tasks with quick buy orders so that you can or with quick quantity in your buy orders so that you can just keep churning those buy orders it is very very beneficial for you as a mayor to make sure that your citizens are focused on what is needed on hand at that time the only other system that the mayor is actually going to really be a participant in is node wars basically and you can set up a test node war which i believe is just node wars for killing other mayor or other nodes and you will enter in a like 100 to 200 kill node war and that will be it for alpha 2 or and and maybe this is a maybe or maybe you can do the territory node war I think we did it once during testing and it had the god spike, but I don't even know the results of what happened. Could be very buggy, but thank you all. Thank you for coming, and I hope you come again.